Yeah, so we know that there's there's sort of really three fundamental ingredients in, in the Moderna and Pfizer vaccines. There's number one, there's the mRNA. So that is the, the protein derived from the, it's the surface molecule that helps COVID bind to our, um, bind to our cells. So that's the active part of the vaccine. We have mRNA in abundance in all of our cells on any given day. So that's quite a natural product. It's not derived from any cellular material. So there's no fetal cells in the production of either of those vaccines. There's no cells involved in them at all, for that matter, fetal or otherwise. And there's no animal tissue there either. So that's number one, there's mRNA, that's the active part. Number two, there's a delivery vehicle that allows that mRNA to come into your cells. And that's actually what's called a lipid nanosphere. It's a tiny little ball of fat. That fat's made up of cholesterol and it's made up of some, of, of some fats that we normally carry in our body anyway. So our body recognizes it and brings it into the cell. Those things are natural products. We have them in, our, in every cell in our body. The third part is, is a carrier molecule. It's called polyethylene glycol or PEG. PEG is a really common uh, device, that, chemical that we use in lots of, uh, lots of foods. It's in lots of cosmetics that people would wear almost every day. So we, we have contact with PEG, whether you know it or not, um, almost inevitably in every day of the week. The only other thing in there is the saline that we mix it with, so salty water and some uh, potassium as a stabilizer. So there's, you know, when we think about the ingredients, these are actually two vaccines, the Pfizer and Moderna ones that are about as simple as you can put in a vaccine. And it is incorrect to state that there's any cellular material in there or that these are derived from fetal cells. Where that, where that um, incorrect statement comes from though, is that there are other vaccines that have been derived from cell, cell lines. So for example, vaccines that contain um, viruses as carrier molecules are uh, sometimes grown in, 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 uh, in cells. So for example, the AstraZeneca vaccine and some other ones that use adenoviruses can, be used, can have cells originally to help build the product, although they don't have cells by the time they go in your arm. So they have been derived from cells, but there's nothing in the two mRNA vaccines that we're talking about at the moment that does. So those three main ingredients, um, the mRNA itself, it's a normal cell product, our cells deal with mRNA all the time. That's the active ingredient. Number two, um, the, the lipid, the cholesterol, the fat that helps bring it into your cell. Um, that's a normal part of our cell wall on a good day. And number three, that carrier molecule called PEG or polyethylene glycol. That's probably the part that causes some of the allergy reactions to the, to the very rare cases of people who've had allergic responses to this. You don't really get an allergic response to mRNA because it's part of our body. Um, so this, these, are, these are not at all uncommon ingredients and, and that's reassuring. So at, le at, least during the, at least during the phase three trials, there were no significant allergic re responses. However, they, they screened out people who had severe history of allergy. They didn't, they didn't include them in the trial. So as we, as we roll this vaccine out, we are gonna learn a little more about those, for those people who have the most severe allergies. And in fact, what you see in the FDA and the CDC's guidance is that so far they say, look, if you, if you do have a severe allergy to something, particularly for example, people who carry an EpiPen, let your clinician know and let's talk through it. If it's a specific severe allergy to vaccines, we want to be really careful. Um, we think at this stage that the most likely reason for those allergies to be occurring is the chemical called polyethylene glycol, which is in the vaccine. But it's worth remembering that that is also in countless everyday other, other things that we normally always interact with, eat, drink, put on our face and makeup, lots of things. So. If, if you're someone who does not suffer from allergies, there's, there's, there's no biologically plausible reason why this would create an allergy because the mRNA is things that we naturally have in our cells and the lipid and cholesterol product that carries it are, are parts of our cell wall on any, any given day. So it's really for folks who have severe allergies, um, speak to your physician, make sure you understand um, what your individual risk is, particularly if it's a severe allergy to vaccines. Thank you.